Welcome to Beyond the Chord with me, Cara, and me, Malba. Join us each week where we will talk about the ups and downs of being songwriters over the age of 40 and what it's really like juggling motherhood, menopause, and keeping that creative spark alive. As if that wasn't enough, each week we will write a new song together and perform it live on the podcast. So get comfy, grab a cuppa, and let's dive in. Hello! How's it going? Good, were you just fixing your blanket there, eh? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) actually. (laughs) I'm I'm proper like like an OAP tonight. (laughs) Well, it's alright, you're in good company because I've got my blanket as well. So, blankets are the way forward, I think. Blankets are the way forward. I concur. heated blankets. I don't have one, but um, oh, I don't know. When oh no, I think it would be the absolute bomb. What if it like blows up? Well, it's not going to blow up. It's a little different than a, an electric blanket from the seventies. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure some of them blew up. Did they? <laughs> oh, I'm still. I have up. a feeling. Right. <laughs> well, I, I'm do, I'm going to get an electric blanket and see. And like one that you put over you, not one you put on your bed. Okay. Maybe it's the ones that you put on your bed that I'm thinking about. I think that might be. Right. How's yeah. your how's your week been anyway? Uh how has my week been? <laughs> oh Lord, like loads to tell you. Tell um, me, tell me. I am what day is this? Mm. Uh I'm nine ten. Nine. Nine days without sugar. Wow. Well done. I know, right? So Congratulations. <laughs> um Do yeah. you get like a like a token or something? I I think it's like, you know, like being sober. I think it's like I'm nine days and I'm not nine, nine days sugar free. And no, I know you're serious. Um which is life changing for me, to be honest. So yeah, lots of yeah, it's been quite momentous the last couple of weeks for sure. Between um, I also did a five day gut reset. Oh, um, that sounds disgusting. No, it wasn't <laughs> disgusting. You just took some herbs and oh. sort, sorted your gut out. It's not like any enemas or anything like that do you know what I mean um (laughs) I was wondering where that was going but I I wish I I wish I hadn't heard that (laughs) (laughs) I wish you hadn't asked me that how my week was um (laughs) which like mind blowing was more than a gut reset you know and it's and and has kind of um made me realise that you know, when they're talking now about your gut being your second brain or, or your most important brain, it you know, it, it tells your brain to, you know, do things. I mean, I don't understand all the science yet, obviously. Um, <laughs> but, um, like, the clarity that I have, that's not to say that I'm not still menopausal or perimenopausal or whatever I am. Who knows? Uh-huh. But, um in terms of like my mood and uh, peace and clarity and um like I, I feel like a different per like a genuine different person like um and it all kind of stemmed from coming across uh, this book called um potatoes not prozac by i think her, ca- her name's kathleen de maison or something mm-hmm. um, fancy which uh, yeah, has totally changed my life, and I could do a whole episode just on that, but I'm not going to bore you. Um, so yeah, Thank you very much. What about you? How's your week been? Now, shut me up because I would be here all day going, oh, and then this happened, oh, and then that happened, and that's not what the podcast's about, that's just our chat. <laughs> my week has been weird, to be honest. How so? So, aside from being ill, which sucks. 
anyone, any parent out there, any mum especially out there who gets a cold, it's like, it's, it's rubbish having a cold anyway. It feels a bit more than a cold, but it's rubbish having that. But the thing is, you can't even get to just have a cold. No. You can't even get peace just to have a cold because you still have to do all the stuff. And don't get me wrong, like, I'm not saying that I had to do absolutely everything that I normally have to do. I didn't. I had a lot of support and a lot of help. Yeah. So I'm not complaining, but sometimes it would be really nice just to be like, oh, I'm ill. I'm checking myself into a hotel. (laughs) Let me recover (laughs) properly and quickly and then I can get back to, you know, life. <clears throat> it just doesn't work that way, but but that's a great idea. So it's, it's, I don't know what it is, isn't it? We should start, start a campaign. <laughs> start a campaign. Yeah. Have our own How hotel. Many moms are going to be ill though, <laughs> just to get a break. Quite a lot. Um, so <laughs> so during the week, uh-huh. I'd got well, I'd gone for a lie down, and this was like during the day. I'd gone for a lie down because I wasn't feeling great, and the doorbell went. <laughs> And my husband answered the door because I could hear the conversation from upstairs. And the guy was like, delivery for Cara Keith. And I was like, I didn't order anything. Not that I can remember. If I like (laughs) been up in the middle of the night ordering stuff off Amazon, like what? What? It's a real thing. And uh, (laughs) my husband was like, oh, I don't think that's for us. And he's like, well, is she here? Because... I can't, I can't take it away until she tells me that you know maybe she's been you know ordering stuff behind your back, all this kind you know all that sort of chat. I came down the stairs. There was like a massive TV. What at my door? What? I, like, I did not order that. Where did that come from? So to give a bit of context to this, someone somewhere has been using my details. To open accounts with a particular company and trying to order stuff. So I've had random stuff delivered because they can't change the delivery address after they order it. Um, and they get random stuff sent to my house. <laughs> I'm like, what is what? this? Do you get to keep it? No, it's not nice stuff. It's oh, not stuff it not? that I would have. But you don't have to pay for it. Yeah, but, well, okay... No, I'm not clothing. saying. What am I going to do with that? <laughs> no, I'm not saying keep it, but like you're not getting charged for it, are you? No, but somebody else will be. That's the thing. That is weird. I know. Anyway, it's a big thing. You know, authorities are involved. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's become a bit of a, a saga, but a bit unnerving as well. Like having, like that sort of stuff. You know, big ticket items. <laughs> delivered and the guy was like oh, okay right it's one of these situations you don't need to accept you can reject and I'll take it away because otherwise I would be left with a TV I didn't order and then you have to go through like the whole rigmarole no. of trying to get someone to come and collect it yeah no just I was like, no, no man just take it please take it now that. yeah <laughs> ah, that's super oh, weird <laughs> that is super weird super weird so that's kind of been like the main thing that's, that's weird in my week. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an alter, alternate reality, Cara. <laughs> I know. She's out there. She's out there buying tellies. Clothes and TVs. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, there you go. That's oh. my week. That's Dealing sounds... with weirdness. Identity theft. <gasps> ta ta ta. Dun, 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 la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> so what is our chat oh. this week then? What is our chat? Well, maybe? what is our chat? We have to go What's to What's on our, the agenda? Next, well, we have to go to our next segment. What's our on the... unverified menopause fact? Right, hang and on. This week mm-hmm. we are going random as per your ageless woman technique. The Ageless Woman, <laughs> Natural Health and Beauty After 40. Let's see, what's the chat this week? What's the chat? Oh no, not sure I can read that out. <laughs> I 
<laughs> that defeats the purpose of random. Well, I know, but I'm not sure I want to talk about it. Thanks. Because <laughs> that's the page it's open. Right, okay. We can cut that bit out. Oh, here okay. we go. Are we not ready yet? No, we're ready. It was just a couple of pages. I meant to talk about thanks. No, we're not ready to talk about that. I don't think we'll ever be ready to talk about that, to be fair. Um... <laughs> Maybe that's a different podcast. Uh, So here we go. Does menopause cause depression? That's a very good question. Um, So unverified, obviously. Uh, Given the link between hormones and mood, it makes sense that the dramatic biological shifts that occur around menopause would contribute to increased emotional instability for women at this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Hmm. Wow. Fortunately, well, here's the good news. Fortunately, good. shifting moods during the perimenopause are not usually serious or debilitating. I would disagree with that quite heavily. <laughs> That is not true. Yeah. Well, okay. Here's some more good news for you then. (laughs) And there is more good news about emotional health after menopause, although we've still got a way to go, right? According to the Uh most recent research, the general trend is that mood disorders become less common as women advance beyond menopause. Beyond. So... I'm going to leave it with this. Age, it seems, actually grants us some protection against mood disorders. Again, I might have to disagree. We might conclude that as far as emotional health goes, the popular axiom is true. You aren't getting older. You're getting better. (laughs) I would take that. Just that last bit. Because I think we are getting better. Yeah, I think we are getting better. I, d- I genuinely yeah. do not right now this like right this week but we're on the way I mean, to getting I better. better than this <laughs> <laughs> is that you better eh? <laughs> this is me this is the best you're gonna get <laughs> <laughs> so there's your menopause unverified fact that you know Ish. something about instability and how things are getting better <laughs> and how <clears throat> this natural thing makes you depressed <laughs> sort of uh, well do you know what I mean <sighs> so that's your unverified it's not even a fact it's more of an opinion call it the unverified menopause opinion of the week <laughs> doesn't have quite the same ring though does it Ooh. not quite not quite well, I saw a really interesting... I was listening to this today, right? I'm going to talk about this because it's, it's on my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know the actor Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> yes! <laughs> right. I just think his name's but really bonkers. funny. Hmm? I think his name's really funny. I'm trying to say his name. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> I have. What about him? Right, he's, he's got a reputation for being a bit insane. Right. Do you know much about, like, other than his acting, do you know much about him? No, no, I just know that he was on in the Transformers movies because my son was, and still is, obsessed with Transformers, so I don't know how many times I've watched those movies. But beyond that, I know really nothing about him. Right, so he's had, I guess, a troubled time of it. Um, had a bit of an unorthodox upbringing, from what from what I know. Um, well, like I know him personally, <laughs> I don't. But this is just from like this podcast that I was listening to earlier today, where he was. It was a big long. I'm only halfway through. It's like a two hour episode. Um, and yeah, it sounds like he had quite an unorthodox upbringing, and then he basically became so self centered and self-obsessed that he turned into like 
this awful human being. He had zero like empathy for anyone else. Right. Um, and he's he's been accused of quite a lot of terrible things. Some of them might be true. Some of them might not. I don't know. Um, but anyway, he was he was talking very candidly about all of the things that he's been accused of, and I'm talking about things like domestic violence and uh-huh. uh, you know hitting women and all that kind of laying hands on women and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, pretty awful stuff. And he was talking talking really candidly about this because he's not not a reformed character because I don't think that's true, but he's more like he's seen the error of his ways and he's trying now to make amends to make amends mm-hmm. um in any way that he can and he's come to this conclusion that um well his whole thing was about his acting his 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 craft right. you know that was the thing that gave him purpose that was the only thing that gave him purpose to his life mm-hmm. um and he, there was something that he said now what was it? Once he'd realised, you know, that that's that can't be the only thing that you have. There needs to be more to life and to be fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And he said, "Your purpose is not tied to your craft." And that line, oh, for some reason, stuck with me all day. It was been like totally niggling my brain all day, and I was thinking, you know, why? Why is that in my head? And it really got me thinking about, and we've touched on this before in previous episodes, about age and about milestones and about not doing certain things by a certain time. Yeah. Like our music careers, you know, we didn't do them when we were younger. Mm -hmm. And now we're on this path where we're trying to navigate a very modern landscape, which is a bit scary and unknown. Yeah. Um. And I just wonder, I don't know if there's like a connection to that phrase. Your purpose is not tied up to your craft. Because we have other things around our craft, will that make us more able or go into it less affected? I don't know. Maybe I'm going off on one. I don't know. What do you think? Um. Well, okay, here is my question yeah i'll i'll what is your what what is the what is your purpose then do you think well hopefully what i would like to achieve i suppose or be useful in some way is that the music that i write that we write together anything that we, I, we do creatively helps someone else yeah so it becomes less about you and more about using what you know and your experience and everything that you've done in your life and then turning it into something that helps somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, and and I suppose that is... So read the quote again. Your purpose is not tied to your craft. Right, okay. So that means, I suppose, who we are as songwriters right now, if our craft didn't get any better, then that doesn't make our contribution any less. Does that make sense? Is that what that means? I think it's more about... <clears throat> like, we... Well, I certainly hold a lot of regrets for not having achieved certain things mm-hmm. before. So now I'm, like, trying to make up for that by doing it again when I'm older. But what I've come to realise is that I wasn't meant to do it No. Then. No. Like, I wasn't supposed to be in that place at that time because I had to go and live Mm -hmm. I had to get married and have my kids and go through this experience in order to then channel that experience into your craft so no matter 
the craft shouldn't be the the thing, the focus, which it was. Right. It should be life as the focus, and then you right. use that in your craft. Well, that's quite. Does that make sense. Yeah, yeah, it totally does make sense, and hilariously, uh, I think I'm the opposite because I think, oh, obviously. Oh, I don't mean I think I'm the opposite in terms of that quote, but for me, I think because I I didn't ever have the courage to to be a, a a creative person, never mind a songwriter or an artist or a musician. Um, when I was younger, I didn't have the courage. Um, or I wasn't ready, or whatever that was. Um, but I feel now that I have all the life experience. But I feel like my craft, you know, and we've talked about this before, you know, my ability to uh, play certain instruments or, uh, you know, the the stories that go around in my head about, you know, all your songs are quite boring and they all sound the same. And, and that's only stories in my head, you know, um, because I would like to think that you or someone else would have said do you know what, your songs are all really boring and they sound the same, right? (laughs) You know, it's not like when you go on X Factor and people go, why has nobody ever told that person that they can't actually sing, you know, and all their pals are going, oh, go on X Factor. Do you know what I mean? Uh Um, Yeah. So I think for me, this time is about developing the craft of my songwriting and artistry. Or is it? Da, da, da. Oh. That is the question. Dun, 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 dun. You know what I mean? It's that's it's, a cliffhanger for next week. It is. It's like a pure EastEnders moment, isn't it? Um, do, 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 do. End of podcast. <laughs> um, but then I also need to like question myself on that. You know, again, I think it comes back to that. I'm a good enough songwriter for the moment and you know I think again I think we've talked about this before and I talk about this when I do like kind of creative retreats is that the physical act of doing something automatically makes you whatever it is you're doing you know so if you are a right if you're writing then you're a writer if you are drawing or painting then you are an artist. If you are doing the verb of songwriting, then you are a songwriter. And it's not your place to judge whether that's, um, you know, because there is no good or bad, but whether you judge whether that is enough, you know. And that's that's coming up a lot for me just now because, you know, the I feel that block of not having released any new music for a long time um yeah so i i think we need to i think i would need to go away and reflect on that uh that that quote and think about it more well here's a question for you what do you think that your music at the moment does help someone else or will help someone else. Well, that would be difficult to know because I don't let anybody hear it. Like apart from you and a few other people, do you know what I mean? So, so right now, no. so no, so right you now, won't let anyone hear it. It's it's helping nobody, you know. Um, but that is going actually. To... That's not strictly true because in the previous episodes, they have heard your songwriting. Ah, well, that's true. Yes, I suppose. But I, I, I do now believe that. I don't think I've, and again, this comes back to, I'm not sure the impact of not having sugar. Um, And I know I keep going on about it, but I can't really underestimate the difference that it's made. Um, Pre, you know, pre sugar, like in my sugar days, um, I would never have. P.S. Yeah, P.S. I would never have actually genuinely believed that uh, my songs were good enough or that they could help other people um, well I hope that AS 
ESS. ESS. <laughs> After sugar. After shifting sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can come up with a better acronym than that. Um, after after it sacking sugar SES <laughs> right anyway uh, <laughs> so I do I, you know there is a, a clear vision and I you know it's almost like it was PS uh, I wasn't gen- I I, I I thought this isn't I'm never going to do this or um, it's never going to be good enough because if it's not helping me how is it going to help other people um, but what I genuinely believe now is that my purpose is to use my voice um, to help other people and whether that's through our podcast whether that's through sound baths whether that's through songwriting um or even just telling my story my you know I think I've I've kind of integrated my lived experience which I've never done before and again that clarity's came from from having no sugar so mm. I think my songs and our songs and anything that we do I think that's our purpose I'm not sure I've worked out what my purpose is yet to be honest well I don't really know well and then but you're young girl <laughs> you're younger <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> younger younger I know but in terms of being a, a songwriter I'm not sure what my purpose is yet I haven't quite found that yeah well, I, I again, you know, I I genuinely believe now, and and it's almost like I've never really believed in my own songs before or my own voice, uh, and I don't just mean vocally, but um, but that as well. Um, but now I do, and and that's quite like. You know, there's a wee voice inside going, shut up, shut up. Don't say that on the podcast, <laughs> that you totally believe in yourself. God forbid that you would totally believe in yourself and your songs and why you've been put on this earth. But I genuinely believe that I've been put on this earth to help other people um, through my voice and whether that's through sound baths or, um, or, or songwriting or our work or Ouija wisdom or whatever it is, but just being me as a human being is to, uh, I think I'm here to help other people. But I had to so help myself, yeah, I had to help myself first. And I think that's what I'm now, I think this year is definitely um, the process of going, okay, you know, start, look, you know, actually genuinely prioritising my own self-care first. And I think that's what's changed since I, since the last episode. I think they, they call that growth. <gasps> is that what it is? <laughs> is it is it adulting? <laughs> is that what your I'm growth at? is now called adulting? <laughs> <laughs> Not the kind of gross growth though. That's getting back to what we were talking about at the beginning. Uh, business, <laughs> business growth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to. Yeah. So yeah, I I, de- I definitely. But I think. You know, as you're saying, you might not quite know that yet. But if you'd said to me last episode, I would have been like, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know? Well, what I mean? think that takes us quite nicely into our song of the week. Excellent. See what we did there. And our song of the week this week, which I am so excited to introduce, is called You're Not Getting Older. Shifting moods and roller coasters And even though your body's getting older The timing is perfect now For once I have no doubt 
That's it for this week's episode of Beyond the Chord. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did making it. And join us next week for more chat and tunes. And in the meantime, if you want to send us your thoughts, you can follow us on Instagram at Beyond the Chord. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, 